Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise and thank you as we celebrate the achievements of the graduates of this convocation and of those honored today. <coughs> we especially thank you for the families and friends, professors and all members of this university who have supported our graduates in joy and in anguish in achieving their goals. We praise you for the gifts of poetry, song, architectural creativity, healing and service to the human community 
exemplified in the honorance of this convocation. Bless this assembly with a spirit of unity and joy, that together we may rejoice in the gifts we celebrate. Bless our graduates, that they may find opportunities to use in work and in service the knowledge and the skills they have acquired. On their journey beyond here, may they know you as the sustainer and healer of their minds and bodies the music and the poetry of their spirits, and a habitat that shelters and frees. This we ask of you, our God, present among us and living forever. Amen. Honorable Chancellor, members of Parliament and the Legislature, Senator, Alderman, honorary degree recipients, colleagues, board members, graduates, distinguished guests, and friends. This is my second commencement at the Mount, where by now I am beginning to feel relatively at home. Recently, a friend from Western Canada visited the Mount's campus for the first time. She remarked on its physical beauty and location, particularly the serenity of the sweep overlooking the Bedford Basin. But what struck her the most, to use her words, was the nurturing environment which she experienced as she spoke with our students and faculty. She seemed surprised, although she'd known the Mount, or known of the Mount, for a long time. You, our graduates, have had access to this unique and nurturing environment over the years of your university education here. Too often, as we rush to meet our many conflicting responsibilities and obligations, we take what exists for granted. And indeed, we are excessively critical, highlighting our deficiencies rather than celebrating our strengths and our distinctiveness. At the Mount, you have been part of an academic environment unique in Canada. At this turning point in your lives, I encourage you to reflect on what you take away from your scholastic years at the Mount and how you apply it throughout the rest of your lives. From a purely academic perspective, you have demonstrated that you have absorbed the knowledge requisite for the rewarding of your diploma or degree. It may be a degree in a liberal arts or science, or it may be a professional degree such as a Bachelor of Public Relations. Whatever your chosen program of study, it has its, at its core the university education, which provides you with the intellectual abilities for lifelong learning. Abilities that include a love of learning, a thirst for further knowledge, and intellectual curiosity that will lead you to investigate, study, and learn for the rest of your lives. Your degree has equipped you for further study and the pursuit of advanced degrees or for entry into a specific profession. If you are one of the lucky ones, you've already found employment in these extremely difficult economic times. I have six children, three of whom are currently actively searching for employment. So I know how very hard this can be firsthand. But at this time, I want to look beyond the current economic malaise. The true value of your education here at the Mount is in your achievement of higher education and with it, the ability to think, to investigate, analyze, develop hypotheses, reach conclusions, and communicate to others in a positive and productive manner. In other words, to learn and to continue to learn through the rest of your lives. You may well return to the Mount or another educational institution at later stages of your lives. You will certainly investigate and learn on your own for your personal satisfaction and to succeed in today's 
globally competitive world, you will have to continue to learn to update your intellectual base as well as its application in the form of skills and expertise. If we at the Mount have been true to our mission, you take away something else as well, a firm belief in yourselves and in others, regardless of gender. We all know the Mount's mission, dedicated primarily to the higher education of women. We all know the we, uh, with a student body, which is 85% female, and a faculty and senior administration where women constitute slightly more than 50%, we are decidedly different from other Canadian universities, where on average women constitute 55% of the undergraduate student body, but an average of only 18% of full-time faculty and 12% of senior academic administration. In being different, I believe we are leaders. Let me suggest that at the Mount, more than any other Canadian university, we seek to respect men and women fairly and equitably. We are not perfect, but we know the value of what, of what we must place on equity. We know the value we must place on equity, opportunity, and access. Let me go on to suggest that at its core, equity is not just a social issue, but it's fundamentally an economic issue, and one that bears a great deal of significance for Canada's future success in an increasingly global, competitive economy. Let me explain. Over the last year and a half, we found ourselves in the midst of a deep and prolonged recession. While we are clearly experiencing a cyclical downturn, a recession, many of the changes that we are now undergoing are global in nature and amount to significant economic restructuring. In my view, the fact that much of central Canada avoided necessary adjustments in the 1980s was simply postponing the inevitable. We now face both recession and major structural change. Canada historically has been able to rely on its immensely rich natural resource base for exports, for employment, and for foreign investment. But the world has changed around us. Increasingly, we in Canada must look to people rather than raw materials as the source of our competitive advantage and of international competitiveness. We have moved from an industrial or manufacturing age into an information age and a knowledge-based global economy. Manufacturing remains an important element of the economy, but knowledge and information are now the drivers and the sources of our competitive advantage. At the core of this are people, educated and skilled human capital. We find ourselves more and more disadvantaged relative to lower cost producers of raw materials and basic manufacturers in newly industrialized countries. On the other hand, Canada will compete successfully in value-added goods and services where our competitive advantage is related to the use of information as embodied in our people and our processes. Clearly, our greatest strength is and will continue to be people. We need to draw on the best, the brightest, the most able and the most creative of our people. This means developing both men and women to full potential rather than limiting their contribution through the creation and continuation of artificial barriers. When our creator passed out brains and innate ability, they were distributed evenly without regard to gender, race, creed, or ethnic background. Why then would we wish to disadvantage a, set, a significant pro proportion of our potential contributors by denying them access to learning, to development, and to advancement? Our demographics show that the majority of Canada's labor force over the next 20 years is already in the labor force or of working age. Future entrants from the younger age categories will be smaller in number and represent a smaller proportion of our future workforce. Canada's future success requires that we upgrade the basic educational and skill levels of our existing workforce who will increasingly need to be equipped with skills for lifelong learning. The ability to think, to analyze, to investigate, to communicate, and to take responsibility. Thus, as we at the Mount have known for a long time, we must educate both traditional and non-traditional students, and many of these non-traditional students will be women. Future competitiveness also requires that we utilize our employees more effectively by allowing them to develop to full potential and opening opportunities for those previously excluded by organizational and cultural biases. Several recent studies have documented the extent of these barriers and biases, many of which are subtle and inadvertent. The federal government study beneath the veneer documents the barriers which face women in the 
federal public service. Despite po programs and initiatives to develop and promote women, women constitute only 12 percent of senior management and continue to face systemic barriers to their entrance into non-traditional areas and to advance generally. The Bank of Montreal's task force on the advancement of women in the bank documents the same barriers and mythologies which have led to an imbalance of women in the bank. Specifically, in 1991, three quarters of the bank's 28,000 full-time and part-time employees were women. Yet only 9% of executives and 13% of senior managers were women. The bank task force was asked specifically to identify the causes and find ways to correct this imbalance. It did this by contrasting the many myths with the realities of women in the workplace. This past April's report of the Canadian Committee on Women in Engineering, entitled More Than Just Numbers, identifies many of the same attitudes, issues, and barriers as they apply to education, employment, and the advancement of women in engineering. Unhappily, we in education are not significantly better regarding the disadvantage of women, disadvantaging of women. The Stuart Smith Report for the Association of Universities and Colleges in Canada identified some of the barriers and their impacts in terms of promotions, tenure, and administrative appointments. The University of Western Ontario's gripping video, the, Ch the Chilly Climate for Women in Colleges and Universities, is a vivid representation of gender bias in attitudes and behaviors, as is Con Concordia's Office of the Status of Women's video, Inequity in the Classroom. The recent U.S. report done for the American Association of University Women, entitled How Schools Shortchange Girls, details gender bias in attitudes and behaviors, which unfortunately also exist in Canadian educational institutions. Specifically, the report documents the extent to which schools and society continue to undermine self-esteem and lower expectations for girls from their earliest years by treating them as marginal, by taking them less seriously in terms of calling on them in class, providing complete and serious responses to their questions, and encouraging them to pursue the study of non-traditional subjects such as mathematics and science. We at the Mount have recognized these issues from our early days when the Sisters of Charity with immense vision and courage formed the Mount in order to provide women with a first-class education in a period when women were considered to be intellectually inferior and unable to study subjects such as science and mathematics. Today, our mission and our educational programs continue to challenge the old norms and to develop intellectual abilities and self-esteem. And we adhere to that in everything we do. We must continue to show leadership in these areas. As graduates of the Mount, you have come to be sensitive and to understand these issues and the tremendous possibilities which real equity can release, can unleash. As Mount alumni, I continue to con I invite you to continue to work towards inclusiveness rather than exclusiveness and to urge that we develop all people on the basis of their potential and ability. At this point, I want to acknowledge some very special people from the Mount community. It gives me great pleasure to announce that Eileen Murphy has been awarded the status of Professor Emeritus and that Lucien Biancini has been awarded the status of Librarian Emeritus. Professor Murphy has had a long and distinguished career at the Mount and has made, made many outstanding contributions to the university and to academic and professional communities in nutrition and home economics, both in Nova Scotia, nationally, and indeed internationally. I won't try to list her numerous achievements and contributions, which in fact are legion, but I do think it's significant that you know she was the first layperson hired here at the Mount in 1951 and that in addition to her demanding academic career in Good Mount tradition of being non-traditional, she managed to raise four children and find significant time for great personal care and attention to her students, including mentoring that continues long after graduation. The Mount has a reputation of excellence among professionals in home economics and human ecology across this country, and Aline Murphy has been largely responsible for setting high standards 
to which our students have responded. She's also contributed to the Mount's record of excellence in the area of international development, where she's been a guiding influence in initiatives of the Canadian Home Economics Association, such as the twinning of the Provincial Association with their counterpart Malawian organization. We take great pride in awarding Professor Murphy the status of Professor Emeritus. Mr. Lucien Biancini has, equally, has an equally distinguished record as the Mount's chief librarian. He assumed the position of university librarian in 1973 and provided active leadership in developing the library collection and services to keep pace with the growth and development of this university. He was responsible for the reclassification of the entire catalog from the Dewey Decimal System to the Library of Congress system. And he introduced the first computer-assisted cataloging system in Nova Scotia. Not surprisingly, he was one of the prime movers be behind Novanet, the shared computerized system of the Nova, Nova Scotia libraries, which allows the sharing of library resources between our universities. Among his other achievements have been the establishment of the university archives and the development of a method for ensuring faculty input into collection development. It therefore gives me great pleasure to award Mr. Biancini the status of Librarian Emeritus. I want to take a moment to offer my personal thanks to the faculty and the staff for their support this year, and it has been substantial. I thank you. And I want to give special thanks to Dr. Wayne Ingalls, who has been my right-hand person as acting vice president academic. Thank you. And finally, I want to mention several of our people who are graduating, all in the tradition of being non-traditional here at the Mount. Val Leonard, who is administrative assistant the Office of the Vice President has completed her studies with highest academic standard while continuing to carry a very demanding job in the Vice President's office. Ginny O'Connell has been supervisor of the Child Study Center while she again has finished her degree. Shirley Blair, who again completed her MA in this case in education, carried a full load as a lecturer in the Department of Information Management. We also have a husband and wife team graduating. Linda Everett Moore and John Raymond Moore both graduate together. And we have a mother and daughter graduating this year, which I found out the other day. We have Wenda Taylor, who has a certificate in business administration, and her daughter, Christina Wenda Taylor, are both graduating at this commencement. And finally, thanking the honor ends today, we have two presidential scholars, Diane McLeod and Cindy Koffel. In conclusion then, to our graduates, I urge you to continue to seek knowledge and to find joy in lifelong learning. I, I congratulate you and I salute you. May you find great joy and blessings as you continue into the next stages of your lives. Madam Chancellor, distinguished guests, family and friends, fellow graduates. <coughs> Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Robert Frost wrote his poem, The Road Not Taken, in 1916 but its message is as meaningful this morning as it was then.
for today we celebrate the successful end to a journey. A journey which at times seemed endless, but now seems to have passed by very quickly. We can all remember our first day of school. For some, it meant leaving home for the first time. For others, returning to school after a long absence, or making the transition from a familiar high school to an unknown university. While the experience was different for each of us, we were all linked by one emotion, a nervous excitement. We didn't know what was going to happen. We, didn't, we couldn't see the road as it twined through the undergrowth, and we had to trust that we could make the journey. In many ways, it is a blessing that we couldn't see what challenges awaited us beyond the bend. Our path has been blocked by some impressive mountains, midterms, bills, illness, and computer disks that self-destructed five minutes before our project was due. Yet somehow, just when we felt like crying, hopping on a bus back home, or catching the next plane to the Bahamas, the obstacles were overcome. What accounted for this miracle? Perhaps it was a phone call from home, or a good complaining session in the sacateria with friends. Maybe it was the professor who knew you by name and was genuinely interested in your problems and your situation. In the final analysis, however, it was you, your ability to keep going, maintain a sense of humor, and cope. Just as there were mountains, there were valleys, which made our time at the Mount a lot of fun. Sports, societies, the Picaro, Vinnies, and other outlets have encouraged teamwork and also been a way to relax and make lasting friendships. The way we have handled the mountains and valleys here will determine how we fare once we step outside the mount. Yes, we have reached another fork in the road, and a choice has to be made as to the future direction of our travel. It's a decision that we must make ourselves, and we will take responsibility for it. Frightening, but incredibly exciting. For when these ceremonies are over, the gowns returned and goodbye said, we will have more than a piece of paper or a few letters after our name. We will have a new confidence that comes from having been successful in a long and difficult journey. We have learned lessons from our traveling companions, lessons in faith, equality, and service to others. We have also made discoveries about ourselves as we balance the conflicting experiences which make up life. Independence, dependence, frustration, jubilation, loss, and gain. Just as on that first day of school, we don't know precisely what the future holds, but we have learned that there will be both mountains and valleys, that the world, which at times appears bleak, also holds brightness and joy for us to discover. So to the professors who have opened our minds with their expertise and understanding, thank you. To family and friends who have supported us through difficulties and rejoiced in our successes, bless you. And to each member of the graduating class of 1992, as you embark on a new path, Godspeed. Choose your roads carefully, because the decisions you make will alter the course of your lives. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. For the families and friends of the graduates, would you please notice in your programs that we would like you to hold your applause until the end of each degree. Thank you very much.
Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the collegiate honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study, and I ask that they be admitted to the baccalaureate degree. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Arts on David Todd Barrett. Terry Elizabeth Baptiste. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all of the privileges and rights pertaining to thereto. Congratulations. Terry Elizabeth Baptiste. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Jill Arts. Jill Irene Baxter. Baxter. Tamara Marie Benjamin. Congratulations. Lisa Christine Bishop. Norma Lynn Fletcher Boutillier. Iris Sylvia Brown. Of Arts. Congratulations. Deborah Joy Bruce with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Deborah. Alexandra Margaret Bruce Ramey. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Alexandra. Natalie Flora Buchanan. Carol Ann Bing. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Carol. Sheila Marie Keynes, who also receives the Certificate in Gerontology. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sheila. Carolyn Jane Cairns. Congratulations, Carol. Michael Alexander Campbell. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you very much. Jeffrey B. Church. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Jeffrey. Christina Lee Cleveland. Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Christina. Laurie Ann Clough. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Laurie. Kimberly A. Cooper. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Kimberly. Sandra Elizabeth Cox. Frederick Raymond Cumby. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Frederick. Rosemary Berlice Dorel. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Rosemary. Marie E. DeCoste with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Lisa Marie DeLuca. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Lisa. Joelle Marie Dantremont with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Suzanne Rochelle Dory. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Suzanne. Jennifer Joanne Denisfeld. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Jennifer. Pamela Ellis. 
I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Pamela. Tracy Lynn Ernst, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Tracy. Julie Catherine Ernst Cox. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Julie. Linda Everett Moore. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Linda. Cynthia Diana Faulkner. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Cynthia. Jean Patricia Flynn. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Jean. Sandra Lynn Fraser. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sandra. Angela Gibson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Angela. William Graham, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Diana Gurchich. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Diana. Tiffany Hall. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Tiffany. Tracy Louise Hahn. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Tracy. Joanne Mary Hannah Murphy. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Joanne. Shelley Lynn Hannum. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Shelley. Thank you. Bobby Denise Harris Jennix. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Bobby. Daniel Allen Haran. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Daniel. Beverly Louise Hebb. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Beverly. Thank you very much. Jennifer Elaine Jodry. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Darlene Grace King. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Darlene. Deborah G. King, with distinction, who also receives the Sister Marie Agnes White Prize in English. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Deb. Louise King, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Deborah. Jennifer Wendy Jean Knickel. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Did I catch you? <laughs> Michelle Darlene Lalo. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Michelle. Beth Elaine Lamb. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Beth. Nanette Michelle Landry. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Nanette. Lynn Lapierre with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Susan Latham. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Krista Marie Laycock. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Krista. Gail Logan. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Gail. Kimberly Annette Longley. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Kimberly. Krista Ann Lumsden. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Krista. Cynthia Louise McIsaac. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Thanks. Mary Jocelyn McLean. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Mary Jocelyn. 
Pamela Catherine McLeod. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Thank Pamela. You. Heather Joyce McPherson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Heather. Manuel. Margot Ann Manuel. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Margot. Linda Elizabeth Marriott with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Linda. Lana Jean McMullen. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Linda. Susan Ann Metcalf, with distinction and with highest aggregate. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Susan. Carrie Lynn Mitchell. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Carrie. John Moore, who also receives the Bernice L. Chisholm Award in Religious Studies. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts, John. Congratulations. Colleen Susan Moreau. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Colleen. Donald Blair Morrison. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Donald. Sharma Christine Neforth. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sharma. Patty Elizabeth Oiko. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Patty. Thank you. Nancy J. Owen with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Nancy. Thank you. Andrea Elaine Parks. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Andrea. Jeanette Louise Perrin. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Jeanette. Mary Allison Putnam. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Mary Allison. David Ian Ray. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, David. Thank you. Michelle Ann Reed. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Michelle. Kyla Marie Sampson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Kyla. Sloan White. Deborah Jean Sloan White. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Carol May Snow. I admit you to the degree of the Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Karen. Karen Elizabeth Snyder. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Karen. Penny Irene St. Amand, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Karen. Eric John Steele. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Eric. Kendra Lynn Sweeney. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you. Mariana E. Toll. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Mariana. Michael Ronald Truman. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Michael. Sherry Lee Walsh. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sherry. Monique Suzanne Watt, with distinction, who also receives the Certificate of Proficiency in French, with distinction, and the French Embassy Book Prize. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Monique. Elda Bernice Williams. I admit you to the great Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Thank you. Madam Chancellor.
I present the Bachelor of Arts Honors. Kim Elizabeth Beaton, Honors in Psychology, with first class honors and highest aggregate. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Margaret P. Cowan, uh, Honors in Psychology, who was also the recipient of the Brenda Milner Award in Honors Psychology. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors. Congratulations. Thank you. Darlene E. Whitman, Honors in Psychology with First Class Honors. I am the to the Bachelor of Art Honors. Congratulations. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, I present the Honors Certificate in Arts, uh, Victoria Sweeney uh, in Sociology. I am the to the Bachelor of Art Honors. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree of uh, Bachelor of Science. Uh, Rose Ellen Chapman. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Cynthia Rose Koffel, with distinction, who has held the Presidential Scholarship throughout the course of her study. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Rosemond Delore. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Rosemond. Eileen M. Fex. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Geimer. Cynthia Geimer. Hi. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Cynthia. Melanie Lynn Hoare. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Cynthia. Mary L. Johnson, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Mary Ann. Gwen Dory Jollymore, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, thank you. Tina Suzanne Keeping. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Daniela Kralovitz. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Daniela. Tara Lajeunesse. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Tara. Tanya Lee Ledbeater. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Tanya. Perry McInnes. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Terry. Martin Thane McLennan, with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Martin. Alana Mason. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Lana. Cherry Christine McLean. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Yolanda Marilyn Miller. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Lana. Stephen Nickerson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Shauna Lee Power. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Shauna. Jennifer Louise Pike. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Shauna. Robert Brian Rowell. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Robert. Thank you very much. Pauletta <laughs> Alberta Marguerite Stevens. <laughs> I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Anna. Karen Michael Swindles. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Claire. 
we go. Joyce Olubola, Adafunka Tanamowo. I admit you disagree with yeah, Bachelor of uh, Science. Congratulations. Nadine Elizabeth Thornhill. I admit you disagree with Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Nadine. Catherine Elizabeth Thorpe. I admit you disagree with Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Catherine. Lisa Van Houten. I admit you disagree with Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Lisa. Cheryl Lynn Walsh. I admit you disagree with Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Cheryl. Maureen M. White. I admit you disagree with Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Science Honors in Psychology with First Class Honors to Annette Michelle Gaskell. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science Honors with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Trudy Lynn Landry, Honors in Psychology with First Class Honors and Highest Aggregate, who has also received a $9,000 Graduates Fellowship to pursue a PhD in Developmental Psychology at the University of Waterloo. I'm going to applaud that one. And Louise Vecheres, Honors in Psychology. I admit you to the Bay of Bachelor of Science Honors. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, the degree Bachelor of Office Administration on Marnie Bell Bentley. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Mary. Rebecca Jean Campbell. I, I admit you to the degree of Office Administration. Congratulations. Maureen Farmer with distinction and highest aggregate. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Deborah Gerwa Thomas. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Thank you. Krista Gail Graham. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations, Krista. Sylvia Joy Gulledge. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Tracy Michelle Luddington. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations, Tracy. Tammy McGinnis. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Laurel Elizabeth Paul. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Heather Pittman. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations, Heather. Lola Gabriela Sablone. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations, Lola. Nicole Angeline Sampson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations, Nicole. Shelley Ann Todd. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Office Administration. Congratulations. Jason W. Billard. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Michelle Lee Boylan, Cooperative Education Option. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Kathy Lynn Brogan. 
I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Kent Howard Brown. I admit you to the degree of a Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Kent. Krista Lynn Birchall. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Krista. Tamara Ann Carragher Gallant. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Tamara. Kathy Lynn Cody. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Christopher Elmer Dawson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Nadine DeCoste. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Nadine. Susan Donnelly DeChevery. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Natalie Chandler Doyle. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Natalie. Mary Jacqueline Flynn, Cooperative Education Option. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Sonia Lee Green. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Sonia. Dawn Marie Heyman, Cooperative Education Option. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Angela Dawn Hebb. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Angela. Tracy Lynn Hennessy. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Tracy. Thank you. Paula Jean Ingerfield. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Anna. Carrie Lynn Larson. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Anna. Alan John McCauley. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Gail Colleen MacDonald. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Gail. Jennifer McIsaac with distinction. I am a to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Jennifer. David Troy Martin. I am a to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, David. Patricia Ann McNabb. I am a to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Patricia. Natasha Stefania Misick. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Natasha. Michael Henry Mitchell. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Michael. Shauna Lynn Peverell. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Shauna. Jason Michael Reindorp. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Jason. Okay. Tricia Lee Savard with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Tricia. Melissa Maureen Shanahan. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Melissa. Jennifer May Skeins. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Jennifer. Thank you. Christine Mary Smith. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Christine. Kelly Lee Smith. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Cynthia Ann Sterk, Cooperative Education Option with Distinction and Highest Aggregate. Thank you. So I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Kristen Suzanne Turner. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Kristen. Thank you. Marie-Therese Louise Vanderwil, who also receives the Certificate of Proficiency in French with distinction. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Marie-Therese. Jennifer. 
Jennifer Ann Wackett Cooperative Education Option. I mean, she's a bachelor of public relations. Congratulations. <laughs> Daryl Trent Warren. I admit you to be a bachelor of public relations. Congratulations, Daryl. Thank you. Verna Lynn Weeks. I admit you to the degree of bachelor of public relations. Congratulations, Verna. Marie Kathleen Warren with distinction. Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management on Linda Demere, Cooperative Education Route. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Margaret Joan Duggan, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. <clears throat> Wilfred Rodney Fougere, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Jennifer Ann Gorham, Cooperative Education Route and who also receives the Certificate in Business Administration. Uh -huh. I am admitted to the Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Shannon Ray Hatherly, Cooperative Education Road. I am admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Deborah LaCouter, Cooperative Education Road. I admit you to the degree of tourism and hospitality management. Congratulations, Deborah. Darlene Margaret McKinnon, Cooperative Education Row. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Dennis Norman McLean. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Dennis. Michelle Ann Maskell, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Judith Ann Fraser MacArthur. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Dan. James Edward Roland McGuinness, Cooperative Education Route. <laughs> I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Thank you. Wendy Ann Monroe, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Denise Leanne Murray, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Erin Lynn Parker, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Erin. Jean-Jacques Poidefin, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Jean. Thank you. Catherine Marie Quaintance, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Christopher uh, Rowland, who also receives the Certificate in Business. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Chris. Carolyn Short, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Carolyn. Susan Lorraine Smith. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Susan. Roberta Lynn Sutherland, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Carl John Tobin. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Madam Chancellor, I also ask you to confer the appropriate degrees and all those names not list, that, not, that are not here, but are listed on the program today. I confer degrees in absentia on those persons. Now, we all need a little diversion, break, 
And I'm going to ask Olive Henman to come up and lead us all in the singing of Gaudiama. So let's all stand. It will be a welcome break. You will find it on page 25 of your program. Excuse my back, but we'll deal with these important people here for now. Madam President, it is my pleasure to present to you those individuals who will be awarded Senate Medals of Distinction. These engraved pewter medals awarded by the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University are given in recognition of superior academic achievement to each student who graduates with the distinction and with highest aggregate in undergraduate diploma and degree programs. This year's recipients are Susan Ann Metcalf, BA in Religious Studies. Would Susan please come up to receive her award? Kim Elizabeth Beaton, Bachelor of Arts Honors in Psychology. Lynn Landry, Bachelor of Science, Honors Psychology. <laughs> Helen Maureen Farmer, Bachelor of Office Administration.
Cynthia Ann Sterk, Bachelor of Public Relations. and in absentia on Kimberly Ann Doucette, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. The President's Prizes. There are two this morning. These special awards, donated by the University President, are awarded to the members of the graduating class who have given evidence of best fulfilling the university ideals of self-sacrifice, leadership, scholarship, all-round cooperation, and to give promise of continued loyalty to the alma mater. The first is awarded to Margaret P. Cowan, Bachelor of Arts Honors. Margaret grew up in Nova Scotia. After graduating from high school, she earned her teaching certificate from the Nova Scotia Teachers College and taught primary grade one for several years in Dartmouth. She then moved on to Northern Quebec and taught in an Indian residential school. Her next move was to Alberta, where she worked as coordinator of early childhood services for the provincial government. In the 1980s, Margaret returned to Nova Scotia and worked as a children's service coordinator in a transition house for abused women and their children. While working on her honors degree in psychology at the Mount, Margaret has been employed as a ward clerk at the Victoria General Hospital. Margaret has two sons, one of whom is a student at the Mount. He's, he's an usher here somewhere this morning. <laughs> she will begin the Mount's master's program in school psychology this fall. And the second prize is given to Victoria Sweeney, <laughs> honors graduate in sociology. Victoria is a mature student who received her honor certificate this morning in sociology. She received a BA in social anthropology at last year's convocation and now completes an honor certificate. From here, she's going on to graduate studies. She gave to the Mount, to non-traditional students, to those in her major field of study, and to the discipline which is her major field represents. She's been president of Manus, a strong supporter for and advocate of non-traditional students. Her cheerfulness, good nature, and sound advice have provided support to many mature students to whom she has made a difference. Vicki has been active on the steering committee of the Soch Anthro Student Society, and instrumental in organizing events from meetings to special programs. She was on the executive of the Atlantic Association of Sociologists and Anthropologists as its student rep and a member of the organizing committee for the 1992 conference, which was held at the Mount in March. She takes her academic training seriously by presenting her own research at two scholarly conferences, not an easy task for an undergraduate. She's made significant contributions to the Mount community as a whole. Vicki. Kappa Gamma Pi, membership in Kappa Gamma Pi Honor Society of Catholic Universities for Women, is awarded to graduates who, in addition to high scholastic standing and a good record in extracurricular activities, gives promise of academic leadership in the future. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, person who was to receive this is not here this morning. She had an opportunity for a job interview in Newfoundland, and uh, she just couldn't pass it up. <laughs> but I think we should give her due recognition at the convocation. It's Kimberly Ann Doucette, Bachelor of Science with Distinction and Highest Aggregate in Chemistry. Uh, Kim was a Canada Scholarship recipient from 1989 to 1992. 
These are scholarships awarded for the, by the Government of Canada for people to pursue a university study in science. She received two chemistry department awards, the Sister Mary Evelyn Award in 1991 and the L. MacDonald Award in 1992. She is also was the recipient of an NSERC sponsored undergraduate student research award in the summer of 1991. So let's give her a round of applause and accept. The Governor General's Medal. This is a silver medal donated by His Excellency, the Governor General of Canada, and is given to an undergraduate for the highest academic aggregate in the senior year. For 1992, the silver medal is awarded to Susan Ann Metcalf, BA, with distinction and highest aggregate in religious studies. Now, it, this is not listed on your program, but I'm going to invite Shirley Nicholson, who is a member of the Board of Directors of the Mount St. Vincent Alumni Association and the mover and shaker, I think, behind this award. She really got it off the ground. And I'm going to invite Shirley to come up and to present the teaching award. Shirley. It, was, it is with great pleasure that I present the 1992 Alumni Award for Teaching. This year's recipient is Dr. Patricia, Patricia Baker from the Sociology, Anthropology, and Women's Studies departments. Dr. Baker has also been nominated by the Alumni Association for the Canadian Professor of the Year Award. Patricia has chosen the Jane Hirschman Corkum Bursary as the recipient of the $500 donation made in her name. Congratulations, Dr. Baker. Would you come forward? Madam Chancellor, it is an honor for me to present Sister Nula Kenny, one of Canada's leading pediatricians, medical ethicist of international repute, teacher, university and hospital administrator, and tireless advocate for children and families in the Maritimes. Sister Kenny entered the congregation of the Sisters of Charity at the age of 18. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Mount St. Vincent University, completing her medical studies and pediatric specializations at Dalhousie University and Tufts New England Medical Center in Boston. She has held positions as a pediatrician and professor of pediatrics at the Hospital for Sick Children Toronto, at Kingston General Hospital and Queen's University. She is currently professor and head of the Department of Pediatrics at Dalhousie University and chief of pediatrics at the IWK Children's Hospital. In a field where a high level of expertise is the norm and dedication expected, Sister Kenny is recognized by her peers and the people whom she serves as a pediatrician of extraordinary expertise and dedication. She is held in the highest regard by her colleagues as a doctor, teacher, and scholar of excellence. She is vice president and president-elect of the Canadian Pediatric Society and has served as chairperson of the Board of Examiners in Pediatrics, Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. She was a founding member of the National Council on Bioethics in Human Research. And the complex area of ethics and medicine is one in which Sister Kenny has been truly a leader. 
The field of medicine provides the starkest context for many of the critical social and ethical issues of our time. The appropriate applications and limits of technology, the gaps between knowledge, potential, and resources, the increasing specialization of knowledge, and the subsequent dichotomy between experts and others who may feel increasingly alienated. Sister Kenny has been at the cutting edge of the examination of these issues in the context of her profession. She teaches, speaks, and writes widely on ethical issues, especially those concerning the care of children, the dying and incurable, the contradiction between ethics and economics, and the centrality of the patient as a person. As one of her colleagues at the IWK expressed it, Sister Kenny has not only a profound interest in ethical issues, but a great deal of expertise as an ethicist, as well as a pediatrician. She has led the profession into these difficult areas. Sister Kenny's influence is not confined to her colleagues and students, nor to the four walls of her hospital. She speaks widely in the community about ethical issues, posing the same questions to those whose lives they affect as to those who have to make the decisions. She is regarded as an invaluable resource person for other pediatric units in the region and a tireless advocate to enable children to be cared for in their own communities and homes. Sister Kenny exemplifies to colleagues and students not only excellence as a pediatrician, but also the recognition of the person and the human situation behind the medical symptoms. No matter how busy the day, Sister Kenny is always available to parents, spending time with families often facing very difficult situations to help them understand their options and to inform and support their decisions. Madam Chancellor, it is most fitting that this university with its tradition of commitment to programs dealing with children and families, should honor one of its graduates who has made a truly significant contribution to these groups. Sister Kenny provides to us all an outstanding model of academic excellence and integrity and of the professional application of knowledge to the benefit of her patients and their families, professional colleagues and students, and the community at large. I ask you, Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, to confer on Sister Nula Kenny the degree of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Dr. Nola Kenny, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. This is a privilege and a very wonderful Thank moment. you, dear. <laughs> When asked to do this presentation, my first response was similar to perhaps that of many music lovers who have trouble carrying a melody. I have often fantasized about being an accomplished singer, and I know this is about as close as I will ever get to fulfilling that fantasy. Madam Chancellor, it is therefore an honor and a privilege to present Maureen Forrester, a distinguished woman whose great gift of voice and her passion and concern for the arts bring the highest praise and affection from persons around the globe. She is fittingly known as Canada's singing ambassador and has found that music bridges all the barriers of language and gaps of culture and class. 
In a singing career spanning almost 40 years, Maureen Forrester has worked with many of the world's finest conductors and with virtually every major orchestra. She is one of the greatest interpreters of Mahler and has delighted audiences with a repertoire from composers as varied as Bach, Rachmaninoff, and Canadian composer Saul Irving Glick. And of course, the three we will hear her sing from on this occasion today. She has also been the recipient of many prestigious awards, including the Companion of the Order of Canada. And in 1983, she accepted a five-year term as chair of the Canadian government agency which supports the arts, the Canada Council, where she continued in very difficult times to be an effective and committed advocate for artists all over the country. However, the deeply human and exuberant aspects of Maureen Forrester, which put all her career accomplishments in perspective, are further revealed in her candid autobiography, Out of Character. She is undeniably an extremely warm, sensitive human being whose magnificent, lusty sense of humor can bring gales of laughter to her colleagues, her audiences, and her readers, including this one. Her autobiography also affirms that her greatest satisfaction has always come from her relationship to her family, her five children, and of recent years, her grandchildren, who now number eight. And with great honesty, she tells of the struggle she has experienced in developing her talents, the obstacles she has had to overcome, to she had to overcome to balance a demanding career and raise a family at a time when societal expectations for women did not include work outside the home. She maintains that she has had an extraordinary life, and what has made it so has been her willingness to take many risks, and as she herself says, to never look back. Like the music which is such an integral part of her life, she is imaginative, creative, and always open, despite ambiguity, to the many opportunities life offers her. Her splendid example of bringing joy and inspiration to so many can inspire those of us, who are those who are graduating today, to continue cultivating and sharing their abilities for the sake of bringing delight and encouragement to others. In recognition of her outstanding contribution to the cultural life of Canada, and for her lifetime of enriching our lives with music, which nourishes the life of the spirit as no other art form can, I ask you, Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, to confer on Maureen Forrester the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honora causa. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Maureen Forrester, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa, with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You will note in your program, there's a little change from the ordinary here, and we are very pleased that uh, Dr. Forrester is going to give us a musical presentation. So when she is ready. <laughs>
favorite song is because I have a long and wonderful career, and this is homage to music that has done more for me than I can ever do for anyone else.
On behalf of the graduating class of 1992 and the Mount St. Vincent University community, I am honored to thank Maureen Forrester for sharing her extraordinary gift with us. Supporting Canadian arts and culture requires a heartfelt appreciation and respect for its multifaceted nature. As an integral part of human relations worldwide, appreciation and respect for cultures first require understanding. Maureen Forrester has that understanding. And it is my hope that it has been enhanced within us during our time at Mount St. Vincent. I thank you again, Ms. Forrester, and I thank those at the Mount who have encouraged us to view life with an open mind. Thank you. You are all invited now to the uh, reception in the multi-purpose room in Rosaria immediately following the convocation. I now declare this convocation closed. Bye. Uh -huh.